hi, it's Megan. So I was recently at a local store and I got talked into the NARS Narcissist palette. I was actually trying to decide between this and another palette which was half the price and the salesperson said, well this is a better brand and blah blah blah, you know, NARS is a top seller for a reason and on and on and I, I, I bought it. And um, it's actually been sitting in my house for two or more weeks as I tried to decide whether I wanted to open it or not. And then I was reading all the reviews, which were not always positive. So I wanted to do a review, and I feel like lately some of my videos have been too long. So I'm going to try to do this really quickly, even though there are 15 shades. Um, so I'll talk about what I think about the palette first. And I have outdoor swatches so you can see what the colors look like outside in natural light, which I think is just better more representative of how it's going to look and then I will do the swatches on camera and descriptions of each of the colors after. So, first of all, it comes like this. This is the I have a bunch of old NARS palettes and this is the size that they always were. The more recent like the NARS Loves Los Angeles palettes are smaller. Um, but the palettes I have and I have a love-hate relationship with NARS for a while it was pretty much the only brand I bought and then I just got done with it and they did a couple collections I didn't like and I stopped buying it and recently I've been buying it again and loving it so love hate so you open it up and I'm gonna hide the mirror off camera but it's got a great mirror and then it's got the 15 shades there 0.03 ounces each so the total is 0.45 ounces and this is supposed to be a more neutral natural palette um, their regular shadows, their singles are $24 for a .07 ounces, which is just over double each of these individual ones. So that would be $342 per ounce. The duos are $34, um, which is .14 ounce, so that would be about five times the size. And those are about $242 per ounce, so this palette is about $175 per ounce. So it is a better value if you want these colors. Uh, a few things that I've seen, because the reviews have not been overwhelmingly positive to say the least, I do think that, because I've got tons of NARS eyeshadow, I do think there is a slight quality difference between um, some of my, I don't, have, I don't have that many singles, I have a few, but uh, I think there is, uh, I have enough to make a decision. There is a slight, slight quality difference. I don't know if it's because of just the size, packaging, the, I, I don't know what it is. I'm not going to guess because I just don't know. But I did notice a slight quality difference between these shadows and the other NARS shadows I have. Uh, then, as I wore them, I found that, yes, they wore a lot better with an eyeshadow primer. That's not really a surprise. I would get six, seven, eight hours wear out of the shades less so with the kind of lighter shades, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, but with a primer, I would get a good eight, nine hours. And you know what? I'm so used to wearing eyeshadow primers anyway. That doesn't bother me, but some people who don't like eyeshadow primers, who don't want to wear it, wear them, might not like the wearability of these. Although I think that's a problem with a lot of shadows. Um, some of these are quite sheer. And so blendability actually was never a problem for me personally. I always felt like maybe they were too blendable and that some of them were so sheer. Um, or I thought they were maybe too blendable. You could blend them away too easily. Um, but overall, I really like the quality of the shadows and I really love the colors. So I'm not... I'm not saying this is the better, best eyeshadow palette ever, but I do think that if you are getting what you want, if you know what you're getting, you're going to be a lot happier than maybe if you expect a different palette. I think this is more akin to the Lorac Pro palette, for example, than the Urban Decay Basics or um, Naked Basics or Naked palettes in that this is a lot less glittery. I think it's a more sophisticated palette. The, the tones of the shadows are a little bit more subtle and um, the other problem with bringing out a nudish, naked, basics palette right now is that the field is so crowded, I feel like it's almost been overdone. I'm kind of done with the whole genre by now, right? We've all seen a million of these palettes, and this one's expensive at $79, so it really does have a higher bar to leap. For me, it leaped it. I really like this palette a lot, and I'm not just saying that. I had to pay for it myself. Um, it's a lot of money. I really like it, and I'll explain why. So first... Uh, on my eyes, I did a more purple look, and you can see what I mean about sophisticated. So with the, like the Lorac Pro palette, it's divided up into all mattes and then all shadows that have shimmer. This isn't that organized, 
but there's almost there's very little shimmer in this particular palette and when there is shimmer except for one shade it's really understated it's almost not there so it's not a fully matte palette and it's not fully divided like the Lorac palette but it's definitely not one of these glistening glittery um, mix of shades where you're just not going to get the high glitter stuff fine by me but not everyone will be sad will be happy to see all the glitter go gone so right here a lot of these lighter shades really are quite sheer when you when I swatch them and then uh, another kind of complaint I heard was that some of the darker shades swatch similarly. I thought these two swatched similarly. This one's a black, this one's got a kind of a blue undertone, but you can barely see it. And then the other two that swatch kind of similarly are these two browns right here. This one's got a little glitter to it, um, and this one's more of a matte shade, but I thought they swatched very similarly. I did not find that throughout the rest of the palette, though. I thought each of the other shadows was a very distinctive... Um, beautiful shade and for some reason I felt like mine swatched better at home than the one that was out on display at my local store noticeably so so while these are slightly not the same quality as regular NARS shadows I felt like the one at the store that was out on display was much worse than the one I got home and maybe it's just my palette or maybe you know it could be that there are just bad runs of this palette that might be the problem um, also, I would say, because I've done a bunch of reviews now and I've swatched a bunch of shades, some of these really light, kind of taupey uh, shades swatched on my wrist, I can barely see them, even though I'm pretty light skin toned. But when I put them on my eyes, they're actually really flattering. And so again, this is not going to be kind of a, wow, it's just unusual, edgy kind of a palette. This is really more a muted, sophisticated, basics palette for people who are looking for that. So the shades. I'm going to go through them now. I think I covered pretty much that. The wearability without a primer, six, seven hours with eight or nine. The price point, what I think about it. I'll probably add a few other things at the end because I always forget something, but I want to start going through the shadows so I can just end this. Okay, so All About Eve, which is, they say, a flesh tone neutral. And this looks like this. Yeah, you cannot see it swatched on my wrist very well. Just a little glisten. Uh, I thought it was kind of a, a beige, a little bit yellow. It's definitely a warm shade, and it's slightly frosty. Um, I like these kind of shades. This one, this one right here, and this one right here, the All About Eve. These are ones, so I, I use this lighter one right here, which I'll talk about in a minute. I use these types of shades under my brow bone. You can also use them as highlighters. This one is neutral enough, since it's a flesh tone neutral. You can really use that kind of on the top of your cheekbones. It really, it's not a huge statement of color. It's more something that opens up your eyes. And when I was growing up, or when I first learned makeup, they always taught you had to put a shadow up here. And now I'm reading a lot of things that are saying, no, 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 that's so like old school, that doesn't look good. But when you do a light shade like this, it just adds a little glisten and a little bit of a tone. It adds a little bit more of a polished look, but it's not noticeable shadow. So that's, I'm gonna do a cross because that's how I did the swatches outside. So the next one is Madrigay. It's a matte caramel, they say. So for me, this is a medium brown, and it has kind of a, again, it's a warmer, warmer, oh, I'm gonna take the plastic off, it's a warmer tone, a little bit maybe yellow toned, um, and it's matte. So here we've got slightly frosty finish, then we've got a matte, and they're both warmer tones. Then we have, right here, Fez, Velvety Cocoa, this is also warm tone, and it's kind of a copper brown. I didn't, I'm going to swatch these two at the same time. It's kind of a coppery brown, and um, it's another one of the more frosty ones. So here we've got the matte uh, Madrigay next to the Fez. And so you can see, and I, I, I don't know, matte shades are often particularly troublesome. This one right here goes on barely on my eye it looks pretty on my wrist it does not Fez is just an amazing shade that's gorgeous I almost wore this one on my eyes but I I think the browns are really great everybody knows this has browns I wanted to show the purple look because people talk so much about you know the matte browns and how the browns look the same but I wanted to do the uh, the purples next is Bali and this they describe as a neutral I don't know what a neutral means this is a dark brown it's a matte again, a little blotchy. Um, again, the mattes are not as 
perfect to work with in general with most brands, but I find that with primer they apply it beautifully. This is a cool undertoned brown. Uh, it does sheer away. It does sheer away. It's very pigmented. It does sheer away. Uh, if you want something that you're really going to build up easily, I would not recommend this particular shade. It doesn't, you can see I'm trying to build it up. It builds up a little bit. I don't really want a shade darker than that, but if you do, it's not going to get you there. Coconut Grove. Again, these are one of the two browns that kind of, I'm going to do it this way so you can put, see these two next to each other. So Coconut Grove is a deep brown infused with reflections. So... This right here can build up quite well. Uh, I guess it's got, it's it's definitely not a matte. It's not like a really, when they say with reflections, it's not super shimmery. It is, um, it's got a tiny, tiny, almost not noticeable there, honestly, sheen to it, but really not that much. Um, and I think it's a warm color. The next shade right here is Madrigay number one, so the other one was Madrigay number two, and this is just a cream. They call it a matte cream. It's not going to show up much on my wrist because it's just too light, but this is a very warm, very pale, it's kind of, kind of a yellow undertone cream color. It's a matte, and this is the kind of shade, again, I would put under my brow bone. Next is Nepal. I love this color. This they call a soft sheer rose. It's like a peachy, rosy color with a brown undertone. It's very it's kind of a warm undertone. Some of these are warm neutral. I think a lot of the palette is warm to neutral. Not a lot of super cool shades. This one right here also has a frost kind of a finish to it. So again, slight slight glimmer, no chunks of glitter, no overdone. The next one right here is Ashes to Ashes. And they call it a shimmery violet base brown. So this is kind of an interesting shade. It's got the frost sheen to it again. And it's like um, brown with purple and I guess, I was going to say gray, but it's really brown with a little bit of violet in it. And the light hits it at different angles. It's a very pretty color. I like it. It's kind of a medium. And uh, I, I don't know. I think it's pretty. I almost did that color on my eyes, but I did it. Then I have Bruce number no. 2, if that's how you pronounce it, Black Violet. It's uh, smoky purple barely purple. Um, and again, this manages to be a little bit warmer than a lot of purples. And this I put on the outer corner of my eye right here, and then I line my eye underneath, and I've made a mess of myself by putting extra eyeshadow on. But I use that as a liner, and then I use it on the outer part and in the crease, and I really like the color. Um, it's I found it quite blendable. Um, but you have to be careful putting it on because it is a shade that is darker and um, it's kind of semi-opaque but I I liked it. I think it was workable if you're careful with it. You just have to be, it's a little bit touchier. Then Mekong. So I'm gonna, this is called Espresso Infused with Shimmer and that's right here and I'm gonna swatch this and then swatch this one next to it. I really like this kind of shade. I don't see a lot of shimmer in it. Uh, it's a deep and brown. It's definitely warm, and there's like gold with a matte undertone. And I think it swatches close to the one right above it, but you can see slightly different undertones to it. Even in this lighting, I can see it. One's a little bit warmer than the other. The gold makes a difference, but uh, they're not that different. Gold undertones, no such gold undertones. The next, and I think it's a very blendable shade, very soft. Okay, the next one is right here, Bellissima One, Shimmering Beige with Subtle Glitter. This is a pale peach cream, well, not a cream, almost like a white, maybe with a beige undertone. You can barely see it. You can see it a little bit on my finger. It's a really light uh I really like these kind of shades. It's very, this is the most shimmery of the whole lot. And I put this right here underneath and you can see, again, you can put that on your cheekbones. Um, it's very, it's, it's peachy, taupey, beigey, whitish. It's really uh, a great, great shade. 
Uh, Lhasa is a lavender gray. This is the other one that I used on my eyes. So let me put this on. I want to get rid of the shimmer. Lhasa is purple with a taupe undertone. And this is kind of frosty. Like I said, mattes and frosties, a few shimmery ones. This I put on the inner part of my eye. And so you can see how easy it was to blend the two different purples into each other and then blend something into the outer crease. It's very seamless. I find them very easy to work with, quite frankly. So this is what it looks like on my wrist. I didn't have any problems with that. The next one is Bad Behavior right here. And this is described as a deep pewter. And it's like a gray, charcoal gray, with a aquamarine aqua kind of undertone to it. And it's got quite a good shimmer to it. And uh, really pretty. This was released, all of these are part of the permanent collection except for this particular one, which was released as part of the Guy Redem collection as um, a single. And I actually got one of those in the mail and uh, it was completely shattered, so I never really got to play around with it that much. I sent it back. But I like this color. I, I find these types of colors are really great to make smoky eyes, um, especially with uh, a little bit of a less harsh look than just a pure black one. The next one is Dagon 2, and it's described as charcoal. This is like a navy black. And they say there's like a shimmer to this. I don't, I don't know. I don't really see much shimmer to it. I've looked at it over and over again. I guess I can see just a slight shimmer. This is where, again, some of these shimmery ones are not quite as shimmery as you'd expect. But I really like the way this one blends. Um, for me. The next one is Pandora 2, and this is matte black. And so you can see, see the blue undertones in that one, and you can just see this is a pure black. I use this as a liner on the upper eye, and I found it very soft and blendable. It is a very deep matte, and um, I didn't have any problems. I wet it a little bit to make it stick a little bit better, which as a liner I usually do anyway with shadows. So overall, I was pleasantly surprised at how blendable, if you look at my wrist with the darker shades, you can see they blend almost too much almost too much away, um, but in a really soft, pretty way. So I was actually very surprised. I didn't expect to like this palette after all the bad reviews I read. Um, but I really did. I'm going to keep it. I think that it's just better than most of the kind of neutral palettes, but it is different. It's not just all browns. It does have, I didn't see they, the, them swatch the same. Same, it does have kind of a smoky element to it. So if you're looking for kind of just a really neutral brownish based palette and you're looking for one with a little bit of shimmer and glitter, this is totally not the palette for you. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more smoky and sophisticated and a little under, more understated, then I think this is great. Uh, some of the shades really don't have the ability to be built up and are not super deeply pigmented. So again, if that's what you're looking for, not your palette. A lot of them are semi-sheer. The glitter is very understated for the most part, but I really, really like it. So that's my two cents. I know people are going to disagree. If you have comments, I would love to hear them. Um, I wonder too, like I said earlier in the video, I'm going to repeat it again. I wonder if there are just bad batches of this because some of the, the some of the like stiffness I read about, I really didn't see in the formula. Some of the kind of inability to blend. I did agree that it was hard to build up a lot of pigmentation on a, a lot of the colors, but some of the other things I read, I just didn't see in the shadows. Um, so I would love, if anyone has any feedback on that, I would love that. If you have suggestions for other videos, that would be helpful. And please subscribe on YouTube. On YouTube, I'm doing a novel chapter by chapter called Masks about makeup and all the masks that we wear. So please, if you get a chance, check that out. I think that's it. Thanks.